Don't you love it when an organization just works? When every day isn't spent putting out fires, but working towards your goals. When people work together, when things just get done. Know the feeling? There's probably an unsung hero in your organization working behind the scenes to make that happen. They don't get shouted out at your town halls. They're not recognized in flashy internal communiques or company reports. Heck, chat with them at Friday drinks and they probably won't even tell you about the work they do. But that work, it's not just what keeps the lights on. It's what allows your organization to go big, to thrive, to do that special thing that only you can do. They're your operations team, ops for short, and it's time to shine a light on the critical work they do. But what is ops? What do they actually do? And how can they help your organization navigate the challenges it's facing? Operations is the foundation of any organization. It's the processes, it's the ways of working, it's the rhythms, it's the routines, it's the policies that govern how a company does what it does. Operations is sometimes called the fixer in a company or it's called the backbone of an organization and it's also sometimes referred to as an enabler. I actually really like the use of the word enabler for operations because I found that working in both business operations and product operations, that's actually what I tend to do, is helping to enable others to do their job better. Operations is quite difficult to define in any standardized way because every business looks different. Some businesses are shipping physical products to customers, some businesses are building software, and others are providing a service. And operations, getting your, your product to your customer looks different in each of those contexts. But one definition I've always liked of operations is that it is delivery of the business. Defining operations is probably the hardest question you could ask me. It is so different and diverse depending on the company, on the culture, on the funding rounds, on the stage that they're in. It is never the same. So it's incredibly difficult. However, I think ultimately it comes down to creating processes, helping people navigate them and removing friction. I would define operations as a mix between the glue between departments, but also removing the friction between departments. That's two lenses that you can look at operations through. I often like to think of it as simply empowering or enabling individuals within a business to be as effective as possible. That can mean removing processes, it can mean adding processes in. Ultimately, I think it's about ensuring that everybody within the organization is empowered and enabled to work as effectively as possible as a team or as individuals. Operations plays a very important role when creating transparency and alignment in teams. When people are working in silos, uh, they're duplicating work, time is lost, and it creates frustration. And then that, as a result, makes people unhappy with their jobs, with their managers, with the company. However, what uh, operations teams can do is find tools to help us work better. And if we don't have silos, if we're working transparently, people know what everyone else is working on, and you know where you can find that information, people are much happier and you can work as a team so much better. So at a people level, operations has a huge role to play in empowering your teams. But in the wider context of an organization struggling to scale, the same configuration that might work for a team of 50 might need rethinking to cope with a team of 5,000. That's where ops can take your company to the next level. Operations to me is really about problem solving and more specifically it's about solving key business challenges that relate to scale. When it comes to scaling a business, it's a really fantastic opportunity for an operations team or individual to shine. It allows you to really step back and think about what's coming in the future. Something I got told by a CEO a long time ago, which really changed the way I think about stuff, is not what you need to do tomorrow, what you need to do next week or even next month, but in a few years time, maybe in one year, two years or five, this business is gonna be 10X what it is now. And what do we need to start changing today, tomorrow or next month to enable the foundation for 10X growth in a few years time? 
That really changed the way I think about how we scale and enabled me to focus much more on not just the urgent, but the important. Technology has a very important role to play when helping organizations scale. Uh, for example, we can look at the onboarding process. You want that automized as much as possible because if things are automized, the faster uh, those tasks get done or people get the information they need. When uh, optimizing the process of onboarding uh, to be a few days instead of one week, you, you can use technology for this and get that new joiner set up with all the accesses they need, all the information they need, and then they can start their role that they were hired to do. Today, operations is locking horns with some of the major challenges facing organizations. It's clear we're in a watershed moment. Perhaps most obviously, remote working has changed the ops game, but we're also seeing operations evolve into more specialized areas, like product ops. But why? And what's driving this change? So recently we've seen this new trend in operations where there is a more specialized ops role, marketing for ops, sales ops, or design ops, product ops. The reason for this is because everything has become more complex and more nuanced. You will have the traditional teams like marketing and sales, and they could live in a silo. They could really think about their targets, about their goals, and, and about their reporting, but they will not listen or hear what other teams are facing. Now, with all of this, it also means that communication needs to be improved and this is where an ops person can come in. They can understand the targets and the goals of this team. They can help with the processes, with the administration, with the reporting, but they will also communicate with those other teams, which means that ultimately everyone does work towards the same goal and the company doesn't have those fr frictions. I think that we're seeing increasingly specialized roles in ops because companies are scaling and they are are growing really fast. But as you start to grow and you increase the products that you have and you move into new geographies and people start using different ways of working in different areas of the business and they look to add more tools, you add this increased layer of complexity to your business and your organization, which means that you sort of need to have people in these different specialized areas or functions across your organization who can actually step in to help improve the efficiency and alignment of your organization as you're moving at scale. Product operations is a new and emerging function within the operations space. And when I think about product operations, I think about it being very much like operations in that it is about thinking about how you improve efficiency and alignment at scale by focusing on things such as tools and processes and communication. But the difference with product operations is that actually your focus changes. Whereas previously, I might have been looking at the entire organization in business operations. In product ops, I'm actually focusing on the product org and I am trying to figure out how do you build and ship products at a much faster pace and ship the right products and how do you do this in a way where internal stakeholders actually enjoy the experience because shipping and building products in companies can be quite a messy and complicated affair and so oftentimes the job of product ops is to come in and sort of simplify and streamline that process. So with this new trend that we're seeing where we now have marketing ops, sales ops, product ops, we have to ask if operations is centralized or not. Are we creating new frictions? Are we creating new silos? So this is a very interesting question and something that we should watch closely and see how it's going to evolve in the next couple of years. And let's not forget the elephant in the room, remote working. Although this shift was driven largely by the pandemic, many firms don't intend to go back to the office five days a week. Some may never go back at all. So what implications does this have for operations teams? Before we made the switch to moving online, there were lots of conversations in the corridor, at the coffee table, where an individual in operations could overhear all these great pockets of information 
around what blockers a team is facing, a process or a project that they're working on, an opportunity or a challenge. And it was a real fantastic opportunity for an individual to spot ways that they could add value. They might know to link this person up with that person or introduce a process to streamline that thing. Since switching to online, that's become so much harder. We no longer have visibility on all these small conversations and corridor conversations. And so it becomes so much more intentional the way that you need to ask questions when you do have FaceTime with people. Making sure that you are having regular catch-ups, having a stand-up. It could be making sure that you're a fly on the wall in a cross-functional conversation. Ultimately, so that you still get that opportunity and being so intentional in how you're asking those questions and what you're asking. Ultimately, so that you know where the silos are, what's coming up, what is everybody working on, and where can you add value to improve the processes. So if working remotely is here to stay, and it seems like it is, does that sound the death knell for company culture? Is it goodbye close workmates, hello distant colleagues? Well, not if operations has anything to do with it. Company culture is how you attract the best people. It's how you retain them and keep them in your business. And it's how you get the most out of them. If that's not important to your business, I don't know what is. The rise of remote work means that organizations have to think really differently about their company culture. They cannot leave it to chance. They cannot let it happen organically. They've got to be really, really deliberate. They've got to understand what is the type of company culture I'm trying to craft. With more of us working remotely or from home, the potential impact that work can have on our lives is just far greater. If that's a negative experience, it's going to have a far greater detrimental impact on how we experience our lives, how happy we are in our lives. So as organizations, as workplaces, we have a responsibility to make sure that the experience that people have uh, at work is a positive one. And that's why operations is key, because ultimately defining that experience is what operations is all about. Culture is the way we do things in an organization. An operations team are solely responsible for that. Therefore, the move towards remote working means we have to be so much more intentional around the way we implement the process and structure around culture within an organization. Ensure that the values are embedded in every process, performance reviews, include them in an all hands, as it's the values that underpin that. Operations doesn't just influence company culture. Operations is company culture. Company culture is not your pool table in your office. It's not a bean bag. It's not drinks after work on a Friday. It's not your Christmas party. Your company culture is defined by how your company operates. We call that culture ops. Working on your people, your policies, and your processes to help your team be really effective and help your company be really successful. If operations is so intrinsically linked with company culture, maybe the stereotype of operations workers as pencil pushers doesn't hold up. Maybe it's less about the minutiae and more about the people. One common misconception in operations is that an individual has to be very process orientated with a fantastic attention to detail and brilliant data analysis. The reality is that operations is a very people orientated role. It's about asking the right questions and hearing what individuals have to say in a really active way. It's people over process. In my career, I've come across two very clear buckets of people that work in operations. The people that focus on the process and the analytics and how to get a business really humming like a high performance engine. And then those that are the real empaths that understand that an organization really isn't anything apart from a group of people trying to do a thing. And I don't want to pick sides, but that's the side that I'm really interested and passionate about. I'm really passionate about it because ultimately we can get in our heads about the importance of process. We can get in our heads about the technology that we have as a business and how cool our AI is or how cool our product is. But at the end of the day, we're just dealing with people. 
people that have feelings, that have dreams, that have desires. And that's what our job is. Our job is just helping them to be as good and as successful as we can make them. So, what can the aspiring operations leaders of tomorrow learn from those pioneering these changes today? To be successful in operations, I think you have to be curious. I think you really want to go out there and find an answer. You want to find problems and really solve them. That's the most important thing. It's that curiosity and also applying things in a different way from what you would think. There is a lot of creativity with taking the solution that might not look obvious to a new problem, a new challenge. A really important skill for any individual in operations is having a mindset about what we like to call being hungry. Being hungry to us means asking lots of questions, demonstrating curiosity, and ultimately being a doer. Somebody that's able to say yes to different tasks and opportunities and challenges that come their way. Someone that's able to have an open mind and someone that ultimately is just hungry for all the opportunities around them. That is a mindset that's gonna get you a long way in operations. To be successful in operations, I honestly don't think there's a one-size-fits-all approach, but if there are any attributes that tie together successful operators, one is, I think, Successful operators are genuinely very logical thinkers and can think through things methodically. The second is you just have to be able to get things done. You have to be a doer. You have to be able to solve problems and firefight in the moment. And the third point is to be simultaneously able to be fighting those fires and in the weeds while also keeping one eye on your long-term plan and your big picture. For the next generation of operations leaders, I think it's incredibly important to be confident. You have the right to have a seat at the table. Currently, that is not enough of the case. Aside from that, I think that confidence can come from communities and finding tools and resources, mentors that can help you navigate this. A lot is about not knowing things and being comfortable with that and also communicating this. So ultimately by doing your research and by talking with people who have gone through the same thing, that confidence will come and you can do your job better. My advice for anybody who is thinking about pursuing a career in operations would be to go for it. So I am actually somebody who used to work as an accountant and an investment banker at really large corporate companies. And in those types of roles, you actually have a very set career path where you can progress from manager to associate director, etc., all the way up to partner. And that would have been a really nice clear career path for me. But I realized that it's not something that I necessarily want. And I'm actually somebody who enjoys having a job where your day-to-day -day is really different and you are constantly working on solving sort of messy, complex, key business problems and delivering value there. So my advice for people looking at careers and ops would be to reach out to others who are working in this field, you know, look at LinkedIn, see if you can contact them and find out what it is that they do day to day. Because somebody can have a really interesting job title. You could assume that what they do is really interesting. But if you don't know what their day to day looks like, it's really difficult to know whether you'll be engaged and excited by the job. So go for it and reach out to people. To me, there are three mindsets that anyone working in operations really needs to take to heart. They are being adaptable, being humble, and having perspective. Being adaptable because every single day is going to be different. You're going to have fires thrown at you. You're going to have challenges that you've got to go and deal with. You've got to be adaptable in the moment and work on the most important thing at that time. Humble because you're focusing on other people. You're focusing on the organization. That's a big part of your job. It's not about yourself. It's about how do I make the people around me as successful and as effective as I possibly can. And perspective. It's going to get stressful. It's going to be difficult. You've got to keep it in perspective. Life is long. The world is big. The challenge that you're dealing with today probably isn't a life or death situation. So keeping that in perspective is super, super important and it's going to keep you safe and healthy and happy.